All right, time for the review of probably the, my favorite bass. Maybe ever. At least of what I own anyway. <laughs> um, and it is a Fender Aerodyne Jazz Bass. Yeah, it's shiny black and you can you can get those fingerprints off, but what's the point? Is they're gonna come right back. That's the only bad thing about black like this and the shiny black. It's just <laughs> fingerprints all the time. But uh, it's a great bass. I love the neck. There's no lacquer on this. It's just a smooth, sanded piece of maple. And it's awesome. And I love it. Um, it's got the cool smoked chrome hardware. Um, this is the, it's made in Japan. Uh, and I really, really, I prefer that you couldn't, I wouldn't trade you for an American jazz bass or American P bass, at least a current one, uh, for this. I, I just don't think I would do it. Um, now like a vintage, you know, pre CBS. Uh, base, yeah, probably because those things are just awesome and they're worth a whole lot of money. But as far as current bases out today that you could go to the store and buy new, probably wouldn't trade you anything for this one. Uh, the only thing I am gonna do, not that they really need it because these pickups sound pretty good, um, they're just like a stock Fender P and J pickup, but I'm a fan of EMG. And no, I'm not going to make this bass active. It's going to stay passive. And because I love the way these sound. The Geezer pickups. The P and the J combination. The Geezer Butler signature EMG passive pickups. And they're going in this bass. So, um, and after that, this may be the coolest bass. Uh, best sounding, awesomest bass ever. Um... I don't know what else to say about it. I'll let you hear a little bit. That way, you know, when I change the pickups, you'll have something to compare it to. Um, it's also getting some strap locks. But uh, here, this is uh, tone up all the way. Uh, jazz bass pickup all the way. Everything's up all the way. P bass pickup. Everything's all the way up. All of both pickups. Nah, well. Pretty good. Here's just the precision bass pickup. I like that one the best. Um, jazz bass pickup only. Phone still all the way up. If you saw my video on the uh, Squire Vintage Modified uh, P-Bass, I mean, it's pretty much the same sounds. Uh, it's a little different. This one sounds better um, by just a little bit. <laughs> the Squire's still great, don't get me wrong. But this one, I don't know how these pickups are wound or what the difference is between these pickups. I don't know if these pickups were made in the USA and they ship them to Japan or if these pickups were wound and made in Japan. No idea. Um, you know, I don't know what about this bass is made in Japan and what's made, maybe some of the parts come from other places. No idea. I just know that the bass itself is assembled and made in Japan. So, um, that, I, I, just, I just know that. But, um, let's see. Uh, we'll do some more just the P bass pickup. Uh, we'll do some pick playing. Where's me a pick? There we go. <laughs> pickups. Uh, jazz pickup off, tone rolled all the way off, just P bass pickup. And uh, I'm still using a pick. I do a little kind of palm mute and stuff here.
um, it's finger style now. Um, roll the tone back up. Uh, both pickups are on now. And I'll do a little slapping. You know, I'm not a big slapper, but some people want to hear what that sounds like. So, you know, because there's not a lot of videos on this bass. Uh, there's a few. Scott Grove's got one. I know some people love him or hate him. I think he's hilarious. And I like his reviews. But uh, he's got a video on it. And um, there's like two more. There's not a lot, though. Um, and there should be because it's a great bass. I just don't know if a lot of people don't have it or what. But. Uh, we'll do it just the P bass pickup now. And that sounds, I think that sounds better. That, just the P pickup to me, is an awesome sound for slapping, finger pick. I think just every which way, just the P bass is the way to go. It's just got that, that, I don't know, it's just got more... Now that kind of mid-range growl or something to the when you just do the P bass and when you throw the jazz on it smooths it out a little bit or so I don't know there's just something I like the you know that's just kind of the way I like it but the jazz pickup comes in handy sometimes you want it to sound more I mean it, it adds some more like high to it but it takes but for some reason it kind of overshadows that mid-ranginess of the P-Bass pickup. And I don't understand how, you know, the wiring and sometimes when you turn them all on you get more of one than the other and things like that. And, you know, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a big uh, wiring geek and pickup geek and all that stuff. I just know what I like and what sounds better to me. Uh, it's got no fret markers, which is sweet. Uh, and I don't, I think the fretboard is tinted like a, a black tint to it, or at least a really dark brown, because it looks darker than a regular rosewood to me. And it could be some kind of fancy rosewood, but I really think, I think it's just stained dark, uh, which is cool. Uh, this bait, see, that's the thing. There's, the American stuff's good, the Mexican stuff's good, and they've been coming out with some cool Mexican stuff here lately, um, pawn shop series and stuff, you know, if you're into those kind of things. But all the sweet stuff is made in Japan. The Fender Japan stuff is just cool. I mean, look at this. The cream binding. It's got the slim body. I mean, it's, it's just awesome. Painted headstock. And some people aren't into this kind of stuff. Painted headstocks and the smoked hardware. No fret markers. You know, I mean, this, this is not probably going to appeal to everybody, especially more traditional bassists who want the old school kind of look. It's a more modern, almost has an like an 80s vibe to it, you know, uh, which I think is cool, which most of the Japan stuff does. You know, back in the 80s, the Japan stuff, it started, they started making Fender stuff in Japan in the 80s, I don't remember what year, but, um, so they had a lot of, you know, a lot of the Japan stuff does kind of have that 80s look to it, or at least the older 80s, I mean, uh, J Japanese stuff does. Um, the Duff McKagan bass, uh, even though his signature bass is made in Mexico, it's modeled after and made after a Japanese Fender that he bought in the 80s. So, you know, it's it's a cool bass too. And I like the no pit guard. The Duff McKagan model has no pit guard. You know, the Japanese, they've always kind of had that. You know, the, most of the Fender basses, P basses, jazz basses that don't have pit guards, more than likely are probably going to be a Japanese bass. Or it just seems to be that way. Uh, which I think is sweet. I mean, I like the strat cup, uh, strat cup for the input jack. I think that's awesome. I mean, I can't think off the top of my head another Fender bass that has that. There may be one, but I just I can't think of one. Your regular P bass and jazz bass doesn't have that. And I think that's sweet. Um, the bridge, there's not much to this bridge. It's a basic, old school kind of bridge. It works. I mean, but, you know, uh, if you want to put a high mass style bridge on it, which I may one day, but uh, it's, it's not a priority or anything. Uh, I did, like I said in the other video, I really started liking the Ernie Ball Slinkies. So I did order some Slinkies so after I changed the pickups. These will be going on here. Uh, these are the stock fender strings. I don't, I think the stock fender strings are like 100 gauge on the E string. Uh, these are a 105. These are the, the hybrids. They're kind of more of a balanced kind of tension thing, I think. Um, so 
kind of anxious to see what these sound like too. Um, by the way, speaking of Duff McKagan, he does play one of these. I was trying to think of some um, famous bass players that play Aerodynes, and he's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, but his is a little different. His, If you notice, Frank Bellow did. Uh, his sig Frank Bellow's signature model was based on the Aerodyne. He only had two knobs, though. Um, I don't know if he just had two volumes because he always leaves the tone up. I don't. I mean, if you listen to Frank's tone, I, he never rolls the treble off. Um, so he may have just had two volumes on that bass. But if you look at the Frank Bellow model, I think the Frank Bellow model, model uh, if I could talk, it may have a like a jazz plate half pit guard thing here on the controls, but it may not. I can't remember. But it's it's an Aerodyne. But uh, Duff puts his neck on on his Aerodyne that he plays. If you've noticed, it's got fret markers. I don't think the Bellow model did. Um, so Duff really likes his neck. Um, and uh, you can see Duff playing the Aerodyne a lot. He plays it on a lot of different videos and stuff. And uh, his may actually be the Frank Bellow model with the neck on it. it looks like it and before Frank went to ESP this is what he played pretty much I mean um, played it for years uh, I don't know why he switched you know I mean ESP is a great company but uh, I don't really know the reasons why he switched I don't know if it was like a money thing they were just gonna pay more money to endorse them or something or he actually liked them better or he fell out with Fender I have no idea but um so there are a few people but not a lot you don't see this bass a whole lot I mean it's it's kind of a it's different, and that's why I like it because not everybody has one. And uh, like I said, the fenders, I mean, the, the, the fret job on this is, is just excellent. I mean, it's just awesome. And it's it's got a good radius. I think that's probably a nine and a half radius. Um, just everything about it. It's just, you can, you know, sometimes when you pick up an instrument, you can just tell, you know, this, this thing was made well. Um, and this one is, you can just tell, just by holding it, feeling it, looking at it. It's uh, it's just made really well. And uh, that's how they do things in Japan. Um, sad to say, sometimes Japanese stuff's better than American. America's going to have to step it up a little bit, but, you know, you get what you pay for. This, this wasn't like a cheap base. It wasn't American price, though, either. It was... Um, more expensive than some Mexicans, cheaper than other Mexicans, um, but like I said, it's like eight, about eight hundred. Um, by the time I put the pickups in it, I'm looking at about nine, nine and a half. So and I'm getting up into American territory as far as price. So it's not like I couldn't really bought an American. Um, I could have got an American special for by the time I put the pickups in it, and you know the cost of the base. I mean, I could have pretty much bought an American special. No doubt. But, uh, okay, so the uh, my camera battery died, and I didn't get to finish the video, but I was pretty much done with it anyway. Uh, you probably noticed I've shaved since that video and everything, so it's been a couple of days later uh, before I got to upload it and everything. But just in conclusion, the, uh, the Aerodyne Jazz Bass, if you're looking for a great bass, uh, maybe a PJ setup, uh, from Fender excellent way to go I don't think you'll be disappointed uh, especially if you're looking for something a little more high-end like you know you're you're wanting to, uh, you know because it's like 800 bucks it's not cheap but it's not you know 13 1400 like an American standard so uh, it's great uh, check it out thanks for watching